Now that is the second video of a whole sequence that focuses on the Kalman filter. In this video here, I talk you through the simplest finance example. The only goal that I have here is to provide you with the intuition on what exactly is the merit of Kalman's sender-receiver model and to see how it relates to well-known estimation techniques such as the ordinary least squares method. So let's start. In this video, I assume that the excess return of a stock, denoted as R tilde T, which you can also say is simply the realized equity risk premium, I assume it fluctuates randomly around a constant theta zero. So let's say theta zero is a positive constant. Now you can interpret theta zero as the constant expected equity risk premium. Mathematically, that return model coincides with the following expression, where for all time periods t between one and capital T, the excess return of the market at time t, which is r tilde mt, simply equals theta zero plus an epsilon t shock where epsilon t is a Gaussian shock with mean zero and a variance of sigma square. Now note the following. The constant expected equity risk premium, so the theta zero, is unobserved. The only quantity that you as an investor observe is r tilde mt. And that, going back to the previous equation, is the sum of the unobserved expected equity premium and the Gaussian white noise term. Now, Professor Kalman argues that you can learn the value of theta zero based on observing a time series of realized excess returns. So notice the following. A Kalman filter trained engineer who looks at the previous equation might interpret it as follows. She might say that a realized risk premium, R tilde, is simply a noisy realization of the ex ante expected risk premium. The noise is captured by sigma being larger than zero. Now the larger sigma, the less informative is the received signal, R tilde M, about the send signal, theta zero. Now an engineer would try to build a very precise sensor to set the sigma to zero. In finance, however, we have to live, at least partly, with the high volatility of asset markets. Yet what we learn from that insight is that you should always ask yourself whether there is a more informative signal out there that you could use to learn about the unobserved quantity of interest. Now, let's consider two cases, case one and case two. Now, for case one, we assume the message is perfectly informative about the signal, meaning sigma square equals zero. In that case, each realized risk premium coincides with the ex ante expected equity premium. Now that says that if you have a perfect sensor, you need only one measurement to reveal the original signal. So let's turn to case two. Now we assume that the sensor is not perfect at all meaning sigma square is larger than zero. In that case, you need an infinite amount of measurements to reveal the original signal. You might wonder why is that the case? Well, that holds because of the law of large numbers, which for our setting says that the limit of one over t summing up all realized excess returns converges to theta zero if t goes to infinity. A 
And that already is a big learning point, which I want to restate as follows. If your sensor is perfect, you need one observation only. Yet if your sensor is imprecise, you need infinitely many measurements. So it's clear that in, in finance, we cannot take an infinite amount of realized excess return observations. So what do we do? Well, at first we need to appreciate that for finitely many observations, we will never obtain the correct ex ante expected equity risk premium. Instead, there will always be doubt whether our estimate is indeed correct. Now second, for the current return setup, we can quantify that uncertainty. That is because the estimate of theta zero, simply the average of realized excess returns follows a Gaussian distribution, which is centered around the true but unobserved theta zero with a variance of sigma square over t. Now that tells us that the uncertainty is sigma square divided by t. So the uncertainty only vanishes if either our measurements come from a perfect sensor, which means sigma square is zero, or if we have an infinite amount of measurements, meaning t is infinity. Now, if you take a step aside, you might say, wait, wait, wait a minute. Isn't the just mentioned estimate of theta zero hat being the average of all realized returns following that Gaussian distribution simply the OLS or the NLE solution to the problem. So if that's the case, what does all of that have to do with the Kalman filter? Well, first, yes, indeed. The solution for theta zero hat is indeed the maximum likelihood and the OLS solution to the problem that I've stated. So you see that best if you consider the OLS estimate for theta zero as follows. The OLS solution for theta zero has that typical OLS type shape x prime x to the minus one times x prime y or here y tilde. Now for x, just take a column vector of ones and for y tilde, take the time series for realized market excess returns. Multiply out everything and you see that all as solution does indeed coincide with one over t times the sum of realized market excess returns. Now from all as it's known that the all as solution is MVLUE, meaning it's the minimum variance linear unbiased estimator. The big learning point is therefore that the Kalman filter estimate for any linear problem will have three properties. First, it's an unbiased estimator. Second, the Kalman filter estimate will be linear in the observed measurements. And third, the Kalman filter estimate will have the lowest variance among all other linear estimators, meaning it will be the most efficient estimator. And if you take that as a learning point from that video here, I would call that a big success. In addition, note that there will be another video where I prove these insights mathematically. But for this video here, I want you to focus only on the intuition. Now let me add a final thought. If the Kalman filter solution for the constant ex ante expected equity risk premium theta zero just coincides with the OLS solution, one might wonder what is the big deal of a Kalman filter? Well, the big deal is that it gives you the MVLUE of a time-varying unobserved signal. 
Time varying is the key word here. The OLS and MNE solution requires the signal on which you have noisy observations to be constant. Yet when you think about the trajectory of a flying rocket or of a self-driving car or the enormous evidence that calls for time varying ex anti expected risk premiums that move with the business cycle and with important events such as monetary policy announcements and so on, you might agree that the Kalman filter solution seems to be really unique and useful. Now, me personally, I find it really comforting to know that in our simplest example, the Kalman filter solution coincides with the OLS solution. In fact, it couldn't be better. That is because we've devoted a considerable amount of time in this course on the OLS method for financial applications. And now you know that that Bayesian filtering technique of Professor Kalman is simply a generalization of OLS.